Hey guys, as you know, I'm on the constant hunt to find the best acoustic guitar tone out there. So far I've had a look at some PA systems, I've looked at different strings. Today I'm going to have a look at different plectrums to see if they make any difference to the guitar tone. Of course they do. How thick is too thick? How thin is too thin? Is there a happy medium? Let's find out. So, I'll be honest, um, when I started playing the guitar I was never that bothered about picks. They were just something that you used to get the job done. Um, friends of mine would say, have you tried this, have you tried that? And I'd give them a go and not really think too much of it. Um, I was watching a video, crikey, 10 years ago, um, in which Guthrie Govan was talking about the Jazz 3 and how at that time it was his go-to pick. It may still be the one he uses to this day. Um, and he made a fantastic analogy about having a soft pencil and how the softer the pencil, the less control. And with the harder the pick, the more control you have. Um, go and find it on YouTube, it's a really good video. Um, so since then I've been using the trusty Jazz 3. Um, what I've found is that my live gigs, uh, I do use my right hand a bit heavily. I'm a bit too strong with my right hand. So when I play, I really dig into those strings. What does that do? Unfortunately, using a slightly lighter gauge string on my acoustic, um, 11 to 52s, it chokes the string out. Now, it's an acoustic instrument. It doesn't want to be choked out. It wants to be lovingly played. You know, dynamics are such a huge and important part of any instrument playing, especially acoustic. Um, so I thought, why not have a look at some of the plectrums I've collected over the years, go from soft, really, really soft, all the way to really, really hard, record the video for you guys, see what you think, see what your preferences are, and maybe me think about, in a live situation, what picks will actually need to do which job. Anyway, I'm going to give you a quick run through of some of the picks that I've been able to find in my huge collection that I've amassed over the years. So this is the Jim Dunlop Nylon 46 Plectrum. Standard size. Um, this thing is beyond flimsy. It's There's nothing to this thing. It's like paper. Um, I bought this. I remember buying this. I was about 17 years old, a long time ago. And it was the lightest pick in the whole of the, you know, those old boxes, the plastic boxes they have on the, the counter at most guitar stores. It was just the lightest one. And I thought, I'll give that a go. Um, so I took it home, used it a few times, and it's sat in a box ever since. So here's what it sounds like. So next up we have a pretty standard pick, um, the kind of one that you pick up in gift shops and that kind of thing across the world. Indeed, this one was given to me by a really good friend of mine, Barry. Hi Barry. Um, this is from the National Blues Museum in St. Louis, Missouri. and It's about one millimetre thick, so it's the next one up I've got um, of my collection that's slightly thicker than the previous Jim Dunlop. So let's hear how that sounds. Next up, the trusty Jazz 3. This is 1.38 millimeters, just for any keyboard warriors out there that would accuse me of getting it wrong by saying 1.4. It's happened before. two millimeters we have the Jim Dunlop Altex Sharp. This is another one that was given to me and has been in my drawer for a very very long time. Um, let's see how that sounds. <laughs> Thank you. 
Next up, we have the big stubby. This weighs in at three millimeters. But by no means least, we have the Jim Dunlop Prime Tone uh, 5mm Sharp. This is something I bought recently and did a review of, um, shot against uh, the Big Stubby and the Jazz 3, so go and check that video out. Um, don't really use this on acoustic, so let's see, as the heaviest thing I've ever owned, how it compares. <laughs> So there you go guys, that's six different picks, all of completely varying degrees of thickness. Um, hopefully it's come across on video as to the different kind of tones you can get. Obviously I was trying to play a similar thing for each uh, each one to give an accurate kind of constant throughout all the videos, scientist that I am. Um, but uh, yeah, I could from my end I could hear some differences in there, I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. Um, obvious ones to me seem to be that the lighter the pick, the nicer it is for strumming, you get a bit of a... Um, a nicer sort of tone from the actual pick itself when it's going across the strings. Um, but then saying that with the heavier picks, as they sort of went up, what I was hearing in the room was a heavier um, low end. So the low end was definitely more boomy. Um, so yeah, I don't, hopefully that comes across on the video, fingers crossed. But that's just an example of what a different pick can do for you sort of acoustically, tonally. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do, if I'm completely honest. I'm going to keep on experimenting. The Jazz 3 is, you know, pretty much smack in the middle of uh, those thicknesses. And I, again, I've been using it for so many years, I'm kind of, you know, wedded to it. But it might not be a bad idea in a live situation to kind of have a slightly lighter pick. So the uh, the one millimeter might be nice to have on the more strummy options. Um, I don't think I'd go heavier than the Jazz 3 live. Um, I can see in a recording situation, it might be quite useful to really dig into the strings. Obviously genre is a big deal there as well. If you're playing um, gypsy jazz kind of stuff, um, the thicker the plectrum, the better. Django Reinhardt himself used to use a piece of, piece of tortoise shell, um, which you can no longer get, incidentally, because it's against the law. Um, but the thickness of those, I remember speaking to a luthier based in um, Cheltenham who built um, gypsy jazz guitars for you know, some of the best in the world, and he showed me a fake piece of tortoise shell that he uses. And forget five millimeters, this thing was like 10. And the idea was that you're digging in, you know, that it's less about the wrist and it's more about the arm. So technique is another thing that's a huge player in all this. So I think my next job is to go away and have a look at my own technique, um, especially when I've been saying about choking out the guitar. I think that's more about me being lazy, um, historically also having too much to drink at gigs and kind of and thrashing away at the thing and uh, not paying much attention to actually what I'm doing. So there you go guys, that's a quick review of five picks and how they can make a difference on your acoustic tone. Do let me know what you think about it and also come back to me and let me know if you want me to make any more comparison videos or review videos or any videos that you think might just help you on your journey as well. Um, like and subscribe if you're up for it as well. Um, thank you so much to all my subscribers and to those commenters as well. You guys are great, very unexpected and hopefully the channel will grow and grow from here on in. Thanks very much guys, see you soon. Mm -hmm.